Bugged phones and leaking documents, it's the stuff of a spy novel, but really they're the details of U.S. government spying on its ally Israel for fear that it was waging too much power on Capitol Hill. This is the Senate Intelligence Committee chairwoman, a Democrat, says the, ins the situation in Iraq is too precarious to pull back and leave just 3,000 troops there by the end of the year as President Obama wants to do. But Senator Feinstein has got it all wrong in Iraq, just as the president is wrong to spy on Israel. Here on all that, Michael Scheuer, good friend of the show, former bin Laden hunter, former CIA career operative. Michael, it's a pleasure. Welcome back uh, to Freedom Thank Line. you, Judge. Uh, uh, first thing, should we be surprised that the American government, whether it's the intelligence agencies or the FBI, is spying on our allies here in the United States of America, or is this something that has been going on for years and we just uh, didn't know about it until recently? Well, if it was a real ally like Canada or, or Britain or Australia, we would be surprised. But it's a, it's a pleasant surprise to me to find out that the FBI is spying on the Israelis. The Israelis are a, certainly a, an Im immensely malign influence in the United States. They steal our technology. They suborn government employees to spy for them and transfer documents. And certainly they're in, influenced through U.S. citizen groups like APAC. Uh, in, on the Congress is politically corrupting. So I, I think they're perfectly correct to be spying on the Israelis. Well, what, what does Benjamin Netanyahu say to President Obama the next time uh, they meet? Why are your people listening to my phone calls? That was me talking to the ambassador while some agent of yours was listening. Well, Netanyahu will just tell the president what's, what to do and what not to do. That's what Israeli prime ministers do to U.S. presidents. And what will happen in the Congress is the, con is the, is the congressmen and women who are owned or, or at least bribed by uh, APAC and other, other U.S. citizen organizations that support Israel will threaten the FBI with budget cuts or manpower cuts if they don't stop watching the Israelis. Got it. Um, yesterday, the White House leaked. Again, it's another leak. There's been no official uh, announcement. Uh, that even though the president is committed to withdrawing all American troops from Iraq by the end of this year, just four months from now, he wants to leave 3,000 troops behind. What's the reaction in the intelligence community, Michael, to a decision well, like that? I would think that the, the reaction would be is we're like putting a, a regiment of cavalry in, in a fort in the middle of Indian territory. 3,000 people aren't going to have any effect inside of Iraq except to maintain our presence. But I think what they're confronting here is the reality of a westward movement, Judge, of Mujahideen, if you will, out of South Asia and out of the Persian Gulf through Iraq to the Levant, to Syria, to Lebanon, to Palestine. And, and that's what they created by, in, by getting rid of Saddam. They opened up a route for those people to get to North Africa, to, get to, to attack the Israelis up close. That would never have been there when Saddam was in power. So are, are you I think saying... That's are you saying that American military adventurism in Iraq has made it less safe for Western interests than it was when Saddam Hussein was running the government in Iraq? Oh, absolutely. In terms of terrorism, Judge, the, Saddam was our best ally. He was afraid of us. He didn't have to be bribed or cajoled. He killed the Sunni Islamists who came into his country if he found them. He was a great um, a ally in that sense. He diddled around with the Palestinians and, and paid off martyrs' families and that right. kind of thing. But the great bulk of the Sunni extremist movement could not move westward because of Saddam. Before I let you go, an another report out over the Labor Day weekend is that hundreds of millions of dollars of Defense Department funds have ended up in the hands of Taliban, arguably used to buy weapons to kill American soldiers. Is Michael Scheuer surprised? I'm not sure because we, were, we have to subcontract to, to people to move our weapons, our ammunition, our food and water from Karachi through Pakistan. And it has to go through the tribal areas. So they're going to have to pay off the tribes that live there uh, in order to get them through safely. Part of that money absolutely is going to go to the Taliban. Uh, it's, it's something that we found out now because it's in the press. But it's, if you think about it from the first day that it was happening, that was the only way for it to work. Got it. Michael Scheuer, as usual, a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge.